Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Marina here and I am so glad to welcome you to the final episode of the series Common Mistakes Immigrants Make. Over the last couple of weeks, we have shared um, a series of common mistakes that newcomers will typically make in Canada and what you can do to avoid those mistakes. Thank you very much for coming on this journey with me. Thank you for all the interaction. Thank you for all the feedback. I completely enjoyed reading your stories, guys. For all those of you who were here week in, week out, just commenting and sharing your experiences with me, I greatly appreciate that. Before I tell you what the final mistake is, if you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please do well to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so that you get notified every time a new video is uploaded. Okay guys, so final mistake that I find that newcomers will typically make in Canada is no tact and diplomacy. In Canada, tact and diplomacy are very essential skills that everybody should have in their survival toolkit. I was reminded when I came here, normally I would, I would typically consider myself as someone who knows how to be tactful. I mean, most times that is. When the bus blows has not taken over, most times I consider myself <laughs> someone who knows how to be tactful, I know how to relate to people, I know how to be diplomatic where I have to, right? But when I came here, I realized that it was something I had to now be conscious of. I had to constantly remind myself because I mean that's what's obtainable here guys not making those adjustments you will just be learning the hard way the average Canadian is very polite polite to the point where it's almost unreal I was born and raised in Nigeria and guys truthfully the average Nigerian is blunt we say things um, the way we feel it we say things the way it affects us Tact and diplomacy may not necessarily be default responses. That's not to say people are always rude, but they are not default responses. They are things that, it's like you react first before you remind yourself that, okay, no, I could have done that a, um, a little differently. I don't know how it is for other cultures, but I feel like a lot of it um, is influenced by our culture and the way we were raised. Like, there's just that thing to want to fight for yourself, stand up for yourself, and not a lot of consideration is given to how the other person feels about it. So I grew up um, feeling like the odd one out when I tried to show consideration or too much consideration for how other people feel. It was always like, you're going to be a walkover, people are going to walk over you, people are going to push you around if you don't really stand up and give it back the way it's coming, right? For me, I always had to struggle with that because I didn't know, okay, what time, when is it okay to talk, when is it okay to let it go, what time? Is it is this tact? Is this diplomacy? Or am I just being a pushover right now? But man, guys, until I now learned how to give it back. Like you give me bus, I give it bus, bus, bus. <laughs> so you can imagine how it was like coming to Canada to this place where, by default, people are looking out for the feelings and the emotions of other people. So you cannot just come here and your default response will be fight, attack. You know, so those are the those are the adjustments that newcomers really need to make when they come here, especially if you're coming from a place where the culture is different. If you're coming from a place where there's a lot of emphasis on survival, you will find that tact and diplomacy are not default responses of people because I mean everybody's looking out for themselves, but here you will have to find a way to look out for yourself and not put it in the face of the next person. That's that's just how I've realized that the average Canadian operates. People are not very direct or very straight to your face with how they feel. People will tell you how they feel, but if you're not listening properly, you don't know the person is complaining. People are, they can be complaining and the person is so polite, you don't even realize. If you don't listen very well, you will not hear. You will just think it's just a regular conversation, but the person is trying to pass a message. That's how tactful, tactful in a way that if you don't, it's almost as if it's deception. <laughs> almost like why can't you just tell me this is how i feel or something like that but people don't communicate like that here and if you don't make those adjustments you might just be getting into trouble basically guys there's no there's no template there's no hard and fast rule to say this is how to be tactful i don't think that's anything somebody can just sit down and say this is the blueprint this is how you learn how to be tactful it's just something you have to consciously remind yourself of Canadians are polite. You will have to learn how to speak the language that is understood here. You will have to learn how to communicate in a way that you are able to separate the issues from the person. So somebody can come to you and tell you something you don't like. You don't have to attack the person. You can attack the issue. 
that just feels like it's a life lesson right there that has helped me a lot in relating with my friends in relating with my children in relating with co-workers even relating with my spouse when i'm able to separate the issue from the person i find that small issues stay small it doesn't now become bigger than it should be because you have attacked a whole personality because of one thing the person did that's a life lesson right there put it in your toolkit okay <laughs> so yeah that's something everybody's going to need to learn you're going to have to learn how to relate to people in a way that um, address things appropriately why tact and diplomacy is also very important in canada is that mental health is a big thing here there's a lot of emphasis on overall mental wellness there's a lot of emphasis on the mental well-being of people and you do not want to be the one who constantly triggers conversations that put people on the edge you don't want to be the one that is talking to people in a way that triggers some kind of anxiety or panic attacks with them. You might not be talking to somebody, just tell the person one hard thing, that person just has to gasp for breath, they have had a panic attack, it is on your head. <laughs> you don't want that, okay? I've worked, I've worked with people who I had to step back to really understand, like when this person says this thing, what exactly are they trying to say? Some of the things were not pleasant. In the moment where it was happening, I didn't understand. I stepped back I resisted the urge to react immediately because guys in those moments trust me I knew exactly what to say with to the person to hit them right where I wanted it to hit but I am so glad I am very grateful that I held myself back those times step back and after a while went back to the person to say what exactly did you mean when you said this and when the person clarified guys I was grateful that I did not react the way I originally wanted to react it's hard though let me not just lie to you, it's very tough, especially for people with bad math, like some people that I know, <laughs> shade to me. <laughs> I can give it back, my clap back can be top notch sometimes, but I have learned in this place to know when to slow down on the clap back, to know when not to clap back. More than half the time, guys, it is not necessary to clap back in this place, I'm telling you. From somebody who just enjoys giving it back sometimes, I've come to learn that you are going to have to learn you're going to learn to adjust to the language that is understood here and honestly i would say i would say i prefer it i prefer being able to be gracious to people as a default response i really really love that i really love that now i'm able to look at people no matter what it is they say to me i'm able to look at them and what i see first is a person and not the offense that's something i have come to realize is working for me so my default response is shifting from um clapping back or giving the person back to a from more like from a place of grace i'm learning how to be more by default be gracious in my response to people and it has improved my relationship a whole lot it has improved my relationship with a lot of people a whole lot co-workers friends spouse everything i would say my relationship with people has improved making a conscious effort to remain tactful and gracious in how i treat people do you understand what i mean so another thing I've come to realize here is that Canada is fast becoming a very diverse country. So that means you will have people who have different ideologies, different orientations, different preferences. Things are different. It is very different from what I knew back home where it seemed like you can almost put people into broad categories when it comes to religious affiliations. You can put people in broad categories when it comes to certain topics. But here, you almost can't. Because of how different things are here, there is a need to be very respectful of other people's choices. There is a need to be extra respectful of people's um, orientations, their affiliations, whatever it is that they believe in, whatever it is that they hold on to, there's a need for everyone to be respectful of that. You cannot come here and force your opinions on people. You cannot force your religious beliefs on people. That's one mistake I find that is becoming increasingly popular. I've heard a few stories of people who got fired at work because they got to the lunch table and just randomly started preaching to people you can only talk about those things if you are asked you cannot start up religious conversations you cannot start up conversations that border around um discrimination when it comes to gender identities if you want to now force those conversations and force people to believe only what you believe that's going to be a problem it's considered discrimination like if you're going to to force your own beliefs on other people then you're discriminating against them and you can get fired for that you don't want to put yourself in those positions it is okay to sit down and listen and not have to give an opinion if somebody asks your opinion on something and you feel the need to chip in the fact that okay you believe a certain faith then that's okay you were asked but to say you will start conversations with people and just want to shove your religious beliefs in their faces you're going to have to find another way guys for me i believe that lifestyle the way you live your life is going to be the biggest um indication of what it is that you profess 
your lifestyle is going to have to do the talking so that's something i would say um, everybody has to keep in mind it is very different here how opinions are perceived here is very different and you have to be very smart you have to be careful how you pass those opinions across emotional intelligence is absolutely important here especially in the workplace you want to make sure that you're properly looking at things properly before you jump to any conclusions because you can very very quickly jump into the wrong conclusions and you don't want to do that it can be dangerous for you it can be dangerous put yourself in that position seek to understand before you attack if you do not understand what somebody has said before you interpret it your own way and attack back it helps to stop and ask questions if somebody says something that you don't get instead of default response to be clap back instead of default response to be to defend yourself and fight back it is okay to ask for clarification to say you know explain to me what you meant when you said that and when the person explains and it's still not something you were comfortable with then you can now say that made me feel this way and i'll appreciate if next time you're able to communicate to me like this people appreciate that better than just attacking and then you know how 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 you will see if you now attack and then at the end of the day you realize you're wrong i heard a story once of a young boy in grade one he went home one day i can't remember exactly what he said but he told his mom that somebody said something to him he's in school usual fashion the parents went to school to now go on you know buzz buzz <laughs> she was not very gracious in how she she literally went to school to attack so they sat her down the, the teacher now told the parent like okay i was in this conversation this is what your child said and this was the response so the child was telling the parent the response but didn't tell the parent what he had said to trigger that response and you know when children are a certain age they have very wonderful imaginations they can come home and tell you things that did not happen so for you to now go to school i want to go and fight because of everything your child said you might just go there and do the work of shame every day where you're coming out you know so that situation could have been different if that parent had gone to the school to say you know this is what my child has said what which conversation led to this can you let me know what led to like there's a way to ask these questions in a way that communicates to the person you're talking to that you're trying to understand not to fight right so that's something everybody needs to learn tact diplomacy are very important tools that we all need to survive in this environment because i mean they are very important they are very key to canadians and you don't want to be the one coming here to now look like the unruly one the one who doesn't know what to say doesn't know how to talk from my personal experience if you know how to be tactful in conversations if you know when to keep quiet if you know when to put yourself aside if you know when to separate issues from the person you're going to have a better relationship with people at work so all these things that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks all the mistakes people make if you get this one wrong you will get it wrong everywhere because you will never be able to say the right things you will never be able to maintain good relationship with people not your colleagues not your neighbors nobody like so how how are you going to make friends if you cannot be tactful how are you going to maintain proper relationships at work if people are avoiding you because you don't know how to talk right so yeah guys that's just i mean i just thought i should chip that in today to let people know that this is something that is very important in canada regardless of where you're coming from that's an area where conscious and deliberate adjustments will need to be made so there you have it guys we have now come to the end of the series i'm thinking that for next week we can have like a question and answer um session i'm going to put a put the post on the community tab of the channel so please do well to look at that i'm just going to put the post there and you can ask me whatever questions it is that you have i'm going to take only the questions that i find on the community tab so if you have any questions do well to leave the questions on the community tab of the channel and we can talk about this thing thank you very much for coming on this journey with me guys until i see you in my next video it's your girl marina saying thank you and have a great day Bye bye